Hello everyone, before going into today's video, I want you to know that I released on Mobile Fire a massive Talia guide with over 30 pages of content, over 40 matchups and over 30 synergies with information on runes, builds, win conditions, roaming, gang pets and much much more. You have the link in the description below and feel free to check it out whenever you need help and uh, leave an upvote if it did help you. I will also answer all the questions you have guys in the comments or on Discord or wherever you want and I'll also be there for you if you need me. Thank you very much and let's go to the video. Hello everyone, my name is Rumaten. Today we're going to do not one, not two, but three games. We're going to do a Talia seminar featuring three ranked games of mine in which I'll be brutally honest with myself and I will try to explain to you all the mistakes that I did and where I think I need improvement and how to do better on myself so you can also learn from my mistakes as well as I am learning. So, we're going to start with a game against Silas Mid. Now their team comp is pretty bad compared to ours, our team comp is extremely good right now, we have multiple people that can dash, we have a Jarvan support, yeah that's questionable, but overall our team comp is much better scaling, much better pick potential for solo queue, basically you have the solo queue team comp with uh, Evelyn and Rengar both in our team. When you have these champions, it can turn into an easy win fest sometimes, but that's irrelevant for our game. Now. I don't want to talk much of these games about runes, I think I talked about runes in every single video that I've done, we can skip that part, I really want to focus on lane, I really want to focus on my mistakes, on macro mistakes and my micro mistakes and everything uh, related to that. It seems that Jenna was AFK also. Now, we're going to start this game by getting poked, that's the first mistake, that's a quick quick mistake that I've done and then I tried to go and hit the Q so that we get some HP back from the rune, from the hill and also that we can do a trade. Now, against Silas in this particular case you should just be careful to that chain at level 1 if he starts with it or you should be careful uh, also actually you should be careful to the full engage after level 2 and 3. Now he plays with Ignite which means he wants to kill me and you'll see that I actually have a lot of help from Evelyn but I still manage to die in those ganks because I either get under tower or I get caught randomly and I do not think enough my engages. Now here I try to not to push too much because Evelyn is nearby and as you'll see she will gank, she's coming. Okay, and this is the gank happening and where I told you that I actually kind of trolled. I did a perfect flash here but then again, I did not actually follow up on the dodge. Let's go back uh, real quick and see what the, what's the mistake that I did. Now, I don't have my W yet, fairly important to point out. And here, I could have just go back if I wanted to, but he would have lived. Now, we don't have flash, both of us, and normally this would have been a good play if I would have managed to kill him. But then again, I did not expect him to actually throw the chains and uh, knock me up so enough so that uh, I actually get into the tower and die. For it. I think a good solution to this play. I'm not. I don't think I'm actually certain that a good solution here would be a flash that's here, not here. See where I flashed? Q would have hit from here. I should, I should have probably flash outside of the chain range, obviously. Outside of the abscond, abduct actually, abduct it is. So, if I would have flashed there, he would have still died from the ignite probably. Or not, that's arguable. Yeah, I would have uh, done auto attack. So, an auto attack would have probably been required, but that's the mistake that I did. Now. I did not play well at all during that, so normally I got first blood, that was a bit lucky, but normally I should have not done that. Should have played much much more better that fight. And then after that I play quite passive and quite defensive, because I don't know where their Ellis is, so I have to pay respects to her. I thought she was at that uh, 
crab, so I went to Earth, which was a mistake on its own, because if she was there, somewhere here actually, and waited for me, well, she would have killed me. And what's the mistake here? Let's do again. This is a silver plate for me. Now, him having worked here, I did not pay attention to this word in the game. He did not see me on lane when I left, but he had the word here. Now, if Elise went straight for this, she would have seen me coming from this and could have waited here, in this point, in this specific point. And then, as I have no ignite and flash, she would have a, kill, a free kill on me and I would have died. Now, let's see what Elise did. Elise went for this. If Elise didn't do this and went straight for this, which in my opinion would have been a bit normal to have a gang bot opportunity maybe, I would have died. Even though Evelyn is here, I did not pay attention that she turned. And even if she didn't turn, she would have done nothing to that. Anyway, I know now that Elise is coming because I spotted her on this. And so, I position myself towards the top side. And I understand that Elise uh, is trying to come mid and she is doing crap, so I back off. That was good. The mistake that I did is that I thought that Elise was going for bot. And I thought she was doing this route. Okay, this is my thought flow. Then again, Silas went to here either to bait me or to check right. And I thought he recalled for some reason. But he had no reason to recall because he was full HP. Maybe some gold, maybe some item. But again, I should have paid attention. I will die here, okay? So, Elise goes to here, which initially is exactly as planned because she went bot lane. She tried to actually go bot lane, but they were far away, so she decided, okay, I go for mid. And then Silas comes from this side. Okay, so this is a macro positioning mistake. Even though I know Elise is there. I did, a, I did a good thing here by using W like this. And I almost survived with Biscuits and Corrupting Potion. But then again, Elise had her E. And I still died. That was a major mistake for me. And as you can see from here that I'm the basically the reason they are the team is behind. So that's another major and crucial mistake that I've done. There's a good thing in all of this. There's a good thing. Uh, the CS that I have. Compared to other games, my CS is extremely good. And while I'm not ahead in kills or in outplays on lane, I am ahead in CS by a good margin. Now, as you can see, he heavily pinged when I left. And also, they backed off instantly. Do not follow roams that have no potential. They had here the word from the scuttle. It was pointless for me to try to go this way and gank because they would have just backed off. He pinged like a maniac and remember in any elo people can go back if they are aware of your roaming. So you have to try to be sneaky. You have to try to roam when you recall after you recall. You have to try to roam when they don't expect really with an ult from a weird angle from an unworded position. And another mistake that I've done that I tell you as, as often as I can probably or remember, get vision words guys. Vision words are extremely important if you have gold. Uh, not necessarily if you have gold to buy them, but if you have remaining gold after your item, after you get one door and then one amplifying tome as I bought, you can just go for the, uh, for the vision word. Now, as far as I know, I ping that he word somewhere there, but this is a very good word, which I don't think matters because Ah, uh, it does, because she does not have her stealth yet. So he knows that this guy is actually good in warden. Now, he knows that Evelyn is around. And so he backed off when Elise was not there. So here we see the positioning on the map that he did. And here I pinged actually that uh, Silas is there. Now, I have to dodge that, but I didn't. But as far as I'm concerned, here I don't die. So that's good. I actually did a pretty good play there. But I have to play defensive here, okay? Because if I get hit by that ult, I could die. 
So it was a good uh, fight overall, but a bit unnecessary. We just made Silas use his ult. And now we're going to see another moment here. She flashed, okay, that's good. But we didn't have the damage because probably she ulted too fast. And I died from it. That's another mistake that I did. She got kills, that's okay, because we want her to be fed. But the mistake that I done here was uh, that I did not position myself for that, I did not flash. Even though if I would have flashed, Silas would have follow up with flash. That's another mistake that I've done. I did not calculate exactly the damage of Evelyn, but probably she did a mistake there as well by uh, not ulting as fast as needed. Mm, actually, by not by ulting very fast compared to how late it was needed in that case. So it's okay that we see these mistakes. We all improve from them, and I try to roast myself as hard as I can right here to understand what I did wrong, and this is a good. Uh, introspective discussion okay I worded there without looking uh, they had a word okay and if you look at the items we are even in uh, items right now he has a different ring but it's okay now Rengar ganked mid with his ult but Silas has some good uh, some good map movements and awareness so we did not get any kill there and here I actually pinged that uh, Silas has ult and Silas goes bot. I actually pinged Rengar's ult and then I pinged Silas for them to understand where is the problem. And this would have been fine really. The problem was that uh, they got hit by that ash arrow. So there was nothing much to do. I could not reach faster, that was not my mistake besides pinging. That was literally all I could do there. Uh, and then we position around here and we're interested in defending this tower because well you should <laughs> now I go around this way as you can see I did not go this way or this way because I assumed they would have followed in this direction direction now this was not where did I this is the first time I actually see they went this path but by intuition I went this way and actually pinged Evelyn to be careful because they might be here. So I go right here, I put a word, they actually probably expected me to be there. And now I see them, right here. Okay? And they see me there because I actually forgot that Silas word is even though I've seen the word. But yeah, that gave them enough information for them to know that I might be around. I hit there a full WE, but it's not enough, it's basically pointless, but I did something good here. Even though Silas is here and Evelyn is here, we actually catch Janna by doing this. And here, you're just doing a full Q. Now she had flash, I see she had flash here. Maybe she was on a small cooldown, but she definitely had flash. I tried the W there, but it was quite pointless. More meaningless fights actually farming sorry and then we're going to go mid now Silas pushed the wave into the tower and I actually pinged that he was missing however my team did not seem to bother to go back right now and that would have been an opportunity for him to roam which he did not but he will soon and they will get caught because they did not list some pings now I cannot follow faster than him I, I can be first but in this scenario i don't need to be first i don't need to be first because i need to actually match his cs now to match his cs i have to get this and now as you can see alice is also here so it's obvious that they're setting something up and so i start pinging that they are missing now if we'd have, i would have followed blindly through here i would have died there is, however, a very good teleport coming here, but we will lose the fight. It's a good trade till here, but then Jarvan would die, and even if Silas did not come here, we would have probably lost. And here I actually did a pretty bad misplay, I did not get anything. 
I did not get a single kill and they killed us all basically. They got us 4 for 1 now. Actually 4 for 2. Because we got this. But she will escape. She does not have ult, that's why this is happening. But the main mistake that I've done was that first of all I did not ping hard enough. Second of all I followed but threw a pretty weird path because they could have waited for me and if they would have waited for me I would have died honestly so that's another mistake that I did now this game isn't really in my favor at all but because we're scaling and we have a better comp overall we're going to be on top of the game soon as Janna can just get one shot later on with the Jarvan, with the Rengar, with the Evelyn, we have all the tools necessary for that now I went over towards here, I tried to ping that Silas is coming, I tried to defend a bit here and what I did then, I went way too close and then Silas actually stole my ult as far as I remember, yes, and now he will ult here and try to get us I did a good flash here, why? but I will tell you in a second because I killed Devil in there, now, and even though I die here, it doesn't matter, I got a huge shutdown and it's fine, this is fine. This is a good scenario for us and that Evelyn ultimate just crushed them. Basically killing a 3-0 Elise gave me so much gold that we actually won it. Now we're going to see some funny sh things here. As this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's irrelevant in our current context so I'm going to speed up till I actually am awake right here so the fight was good the silas ult was pretty bad considering that i flashed it also here i got the crab very important get all the crabs that you can and rengar got a kill on ash we start we slowly start to outscale them because of the huge shutdowns that we got from eliz and soon that we'll get from uh, camille she'll get another kill and then she will die with a lot of gold on top of her head which is quite okay for us in the current context now I tried another mistake here, let's not rush over those mistakes now my top laner pinged for me to defend that and as you can see here I had no clear vision of Elise wherever she would be all I knew in this current context is that Rengar is not there, Rengar is here as you can see and minions are coming to this tower. Now I expected Elise to be bot side in this scenario because of her, as you can see, uh, there needs to be some defenses set up. But then again, I went to here and maybe I was looking at CS, maybe I did not react fast enough. Uh, I probably should have paid attention to this zone more as I would have maybe survived. But that's arguable right here in the context. Now, my team does the mistake of uh, doing this, maybe. <laughs> but it's irrelevant. Also, we have here a small breakdown because Evelyn will also die. And Evelyn has a ton of gold on her, which will probably make us lose if we don't start to get them, kill them somehow. So. Evelyn got caught here, it was pointless for her to ult. We lost also, uh, I did a bad play here, but we lost also that Herald. And we're not doing that fine here, we're not doing that okay. But I would have probably one shot here, at least if I paid attention to the prediction. Okay, so we're not ahead, but what happened actually? How did we win the game from this point and how did I come back in the game? That's the main question. Well, first of all, I stopped doing the major mistakes that I did before. So, I started actually playing. That's what happened. And we're going to push the mid as usual. I'm paying that Silas is not there for a thousandth time. And here we actually started the fight by Elise dying. So, uh, sorry, by, by, yeah, by Elise dying, and then I actually ulted and killed that Camille. Uh, but I want to show you here what's happening. Two players died in our team, two are fighting Silas. 
and then what I'm doing is that I jumped on this Camille, I get the kill and they are low HP, we have a 3 for 2 fight which we won, even though Evelyn died she did not give that much gold this time. Now I tried to seek them out but it wasn't that, it didn't matter right now. And then I went here, I tried to get a kill on Janna but I failed. So again we got a slight advantage that could turn for the better. And I did not click my champion, okay. Now let's move on to the next scenarios, the next fight, the next important thing. Now I tried around here to actually bait that at least because we did not have, they did not have vision. I also started to buy some vision words later on, which actually turned out to be extremely useful because, well, vision words. <laughs> Also they were there and I knew I was on a ward here and I also knew that we could just defend this by doing small words, small stuff. We also got Camille there, very important now. Our jungler went onto their top laner which turned useful and Jarvan made a flash go off there. I actually got... <laughs> I actually got stunned there, but because of the Silas, I flashed in panic mostly. So let's see what happened here once again. Good engage by Jarvan. Good ult. Normally he would have been dead. But he stopped to watch perfectly. And here I actually flashed because he could have jumped on me if he wanted to. So I just chose the defensive stance, which is the better option after all. And we did more fighting, Rengar has no point in jumping here, we did more meaningless trades because we could not get kills here, and also this is a very important thing that happened. Okay, so let's see again what happened here, a major mistake by there, by there Elise, okay, I'm seeing there Elise, there is a minion actually chasing her, and we see her from there too. Now. This should not happen. And also Janna is having cooldown on her shield and she's far away. This should not happen if you have a ton of gold on you or if you are ahead. Now in this case she is ahead. She's possibly the second most fat person in their team. Well, maybe third, but arguably. But still, you should not die like that. That gold propulsed me, gave me so much advantage that actually put me far ahead than I was before. Couple this with some advanced farming that I had on top of that and we're actually getting far ahead. Now there is some meaningless fighting on mid lane. We actually win uh, again by getting the kill on their uh, on their mid laner but things are not looking that well as you can see here. Let's see. Camille fighting those two, slightly winning, Talia engaging right now, doing the first thing that needs to be done and actually killing Elise, so their target that has a lot of you know, resources, gold, that deals damage and so on, and then separating the fight. This was a good fight for us, again, we got two kills, my top and jungler actually defended well against their top laner, for some reason she could not kill anyone. And I got the kill on Elise, and also we got the kill on Silas by a good Evelyn engage. Where am I again? I am right here, we're gonna move faster a bit. Okay, now I'm going top, okay? I've seen Ash pushing, probably, she probably gave up by this point and she wants to get back in the game by doing some farm. She had a vision ward there, but it didn't matter really because now I cornered her and from this point she does not have the damage to kill me. So we got another kill on her and we got it for free. Now the drake was open so they just did it and that was a mistake from our side but we could just go for the Baron from this point because their ADC was dead and we have full vision as you can see here, three vision words. I think this one's mine, no this one, mine is in the back but I think I, okay this is mine but I will actually put it here to do some replacements for a more aggressive word. And they really don't have time to actually come here into the pit and do anything with it. And they will try to engage. Now I did a good 
great, that's important. I did a good uh, sidestep maybe there. A good Elise would have hit him, would have hit me actually there, but she probably did not expect the movement speed from the passive. And now, there's a fight going on again. And as you can see how I engage here, full ult, full damage on three targets, uh, mainly their ADC. Should have actually targeted probably Janna or Silas for the utility that they bring in. But killing their Ash is a good thing as well. Even though she's 06, it's okay. Now in this context, Janna would have provided... Silas actually would have provided the most uh, utility. And he got caught here. Okay. But we kept fighting. And you can see here that I will Zonia just, just to be sure that I don't die randomly. But we did again a good fight. Now, you've seen my bad plays, you've seen my good plays, both of them in the same game. Now, it's interesting, I actually decided that I'm not going to be the reason to lose this game mid-game, apparently. So I started to think more on this macro and micro decisions. And we also started scaling more, so there was a double-edged sword advantage. That's not a good way to put it. But there was a double advantage that we started having, mainly because from... 3-6 now I made 6 because I actually untilted myself during the game and I believe that's one of the main reason that we actually uh, won the game not necessarily the primary reason but one of the first three maybe uh, I guess we did very fine by killing someone every fight in my engages in my ults so when you ult and you kill someone you already create a small advantage for your team and also they got very tilted when they saw that we are actually doing this fine ahead. We're gonna move a bit faster now. There's going to be another fight. I step over vision where it's here. They obviously seen me. But it doesn't really matter because we got so much advantage here. Okay, I will go and take this inhibitor. And they will soon surrender. Game's over. I don't think they even surrender actually. And we're going to win uh, by getting both inhibitors, by destroying the base and doing all the required stuff. Now, this was a very interesting game. It was 12-12. The score was identical. Also, nice flash there. It was a not so one game by minutes 15. It was the same score. It wasn't something that we we're certain that we we're going to win. But because we all started to focus a bit more and we scaled and Evelyn got some good picks, we inevitably got the advantage and here I probably die. Okay, not here, but later on the Camille. So the main takeaway is just don't ruin your mood and try to keep yourself untilted during the game. It's very important to do that because if I wouldn't, I would have probably been 310 now, not 106. I didn't die since I was at 36. And even though Evelyn got some picks, and she was the main reason that we actually won, it was a cumulative effort from the whole team, and I believe everyone actually tried their best. So just try not to get too tilted. There was a point in the game where our Evelyn, when she gave the 3 0 or 5 0 uh, shutdown to their, I don't know, someone. There was a point and she kind of tilted there and we would have lost if she kept the tilt but she didn't tilt. Uh, after that she gained her mental power again and I did too and we started to get some picks and some kills. Elise got tilted because she got her advantage uh, taken off from her. Same with Silas by being picked off and their Ash, Ash, I would be the same honestly with the 07 Ash but then again you have to be strong mentally to win these kind of games uh, for both teams. I don't think they were predestined to lose, I just believe that if Ash and probably their Silas or their top laner played a bit bit safer or better in some cases. Now the, their Silas played best, I don't want to flame him, he did the best in their team, he actually tried to carry them as much as he could, but he, we probably with more support from their ADC and top lane they would have probably win. Now if Camille didn't get caught on bot lane or Ash didn't well die so much they would have won actually maybe in three out of ten cases so that's still some good chances of winning not every game because we are thinking is scaling better than theirs and maybe the player skill factors in which is better but in some cases they would have won and the mental is very important here this is the first game and i really hope you enjoyed it we're going to soon 
move to the second one. So here we are in the second game, right now we're playing jungle and this is actually one of the games for my series to Diamond 1. I won this one and also lost the next one and the last one, the final series deciding game, I won it so it's fine. Uh, that's irrelevant to you though. Now in this video I'm going to show how I played Lia Jungle. Now to be noted this is a full Diamond 2 and Diamond 1 game and this guy is Grandmaster. Oddly with a pretty bad matchmaking rating apparently. Uh, whatever. Now I did some misplays but I also believe this is a good example to see to know how to play Tlia better in general in jungle and now uh, I'm gonna talk a bit about the Fiora now this Fiora where is she here it's playing with exhaust but it does not matter really this is on the new patch the latest patch and this Fiora is quite busted <laughs> she actually kind of won the game herself mid to late game us the rest of us we just kept it alive enough for her to do that now the game starts with an interesting thing guess what what's going to happen here oh you didn't guess that right <laughs> okay basically the game started with trash wasting his flash on me always stay here and always pay attention to their support maybe he will flash if he flashes you either step to the side like I did with your passive or you try to flash it now my bot will still die to him somehow this uh, Xerath will get hooked into the Kalista into the Flay he will not flash in time he will still die but that's a bit relevant uh, for our discussion right now we're gonna go faster now I'm playing the standard build with Dark Harvest and the jungler item and you know I'm actually playing now Talia with Relentless Hunter more than the Ravenous Hunter so most games I go for the movement speed but I kind of believe and still uh, maintain the idea that Talia is not that strong on mid lane and right now she's quite good in jungle as well uh, but on mid lane against most assassins that are the same skill level as you, you're probably going to struggle uh, and if you beat them it means that they aren't really the same skill level as you so that's how it works. Now you can do fine against most matchups but for someone like me who likes to play more aggressive I believe Talia mid is not an optimal pick and Talia jungle will do the job far more better if you ban Rengar and if you're careful to picks like Blue Cain or Kha'Zix or you know the ones that are annoying and can one shot you even maybe Vi sometimes or champions the likes of them champions in that area now I'm just farming right now it's nothing spectacular but as I predicted and told you I actually predicted the game but you cannot see that I thought that if Trish has no flash Xerath will survive but then again obviously it's a ranked game so I thought okay he will die and as you can see he did not use flash or anything now um, I'm against the Warwick with a very high win rate. He played okay-ish, I guess. Uh, but I think the good thing that I did in this game was that I did not get much kills. I mostly participated in getting other people getting kills, but I did not get the kills so that my team actually is able to scale better. We also scale generally better. And as you can see here, uh, they seen me by that, uh, by the how do you call it, plant, and so I uh, tried to position myself for a spell on Cassidin, but uh, Twisted Fate is low HP, so we have to back off. I actually noted that there might be a Warwick that does that, and I backed off. Uh, obviously, I did not know that Warwick did not take his rights, but I kind of picked and uh, thought that, wait, if he has the plant there, maybe he has the rights too. Now that's irrelevant for our case uh, because we're trying to get Fiora fed right now, we're going top faster a bit. We kinda know that there are no words but honestly this was a very bad W. If I hit the W here maybe it would have killed him but that was, uh, that was unfortunate. I actually did the W too fast, do not rush when you're playing jungle with your W. Again, two times in a row missing the W, wasting time when I could actually, you know, do something more useful. And then again, 
waste so much time in that bush. Uh, some people do waste a lot of time in bushes like that and turns into a bad clusterfuck of things. Okay, so Warwick here is very ahead in CS, but he will start this Drake here and Twisted Fate will soon catch him. So yeah, that's a bit funny if we consider the situation. And as you can notice here, Warwick is really winning against this and I don't know why he turned here actually he just got the free kill there now what happened here I actually went to take my golems and I took them partly because I really wanted to gank bot now uh, I went here and started attacking the Callista I did a perfect W there and I actually killed her because I had the last auto attack. If she would have needed one more auto attack to be killed, I mean, if I would have to do one more auto attack, she would have killed me probably there. So we're kind of fortunate. I don't know what happened on mid lane though. It seemed like there's an outplay. Maybe you want to see it, maybe not. Uh, but yeah, let's see. Okay, Cassidy makes level 6. Flashes, does not kill. <laughs> Okay, how much HP does he have? Did we just win the, I don't know, mid game because this fight? Ah, never mind, 30 HP, that's a big difference. I mean, uh, probably a good cast, that was nice as well. Probably a good cast would, would calculate that better, but 30 damage is 30 damage, we cannot contest that. Now. Fiora is slowly trying to win, but every time she kills the Rumble, she dies. And Rumble has a big uh, CS advantage, and Fiora will also lose a lot of CS here, so she's a bit set back by that. But we don't care much, because she will actually win, I promise you. Now I got frights here. Uh, a, an important thing, a very, very crucial important thing on Tulia jungle, get that red trinket as fast as you can and get some vision words, maybe one, maybe two in the early game because they are extremely useful, especially when you don't have enough gold to finish any item usually get the vision word and put it right in this bush where I put it here and then after that you just wait, you move a little bit here, you try to see where the opponents are and this was actually a quite interesting moment because he, Trash is doing this his positions there and I'm actually following here with a good full uh, Q and W and E but that was not enough so I had to you know go back. Now Kaisa here goes a bit too aggressive and sorry not Kaisa, Kalista. And here I either flashed perfectly that or I don't know what happened. Now as you can see me and our bot lane we are winning this very very hard uh, because <laughs> they misplayed massively we can redo this whole fight now Kalista gets caught Warwick tries to hold me but for some reason misplays I still had flash you remember that okay I think I actually flashed badly I think I wasted my flash there and then I've seen the lantern so I decided well I tried to predict it but that was a horrible horrible moment and also in this point I return to the CS and get my advantage now as a Talia you should mostly try to do your rotations and get golems on cooldown as much as you can before you get your jungler item and after as well your jungler item finished the jungler item must be completed as fast as you can because it provides a huge huge enormous actually uh, power spike that's the word and it enables you it really does so I recommend it for everyone to try it to get as fast as they can so do not I did that mistake before do not start red go golems and gang bot at level 2 that's a mistake start red go golems go right go bot only in the case that your team gets caught here and you might get a kill or two but if you stay too much in this zone their jungler every time will be free to take your blue buff and if they take your blue buff you will not have anything else after that now 
we slowly move towards top lane now here is another important thing that i did i waited here as much as i could for the fiora to come and i did not go close to him since i know he has his ult and i know he can kill me instantly if he plays right uh, now here he did a pretty good flash uh, but the point is that we removed that, we removed the flash for further ganks and further moments. That's, this was actually a perfect W. Now if I wouldn't W there, maybe I would have uh, been in his range and maybe die, so I had to be a bit careful here. Also an interesting moment here, I'm coming to mid lane, I'm actually pinging that I'm close, but my ult is a bit far. Now I casted the ult, as you can see I'm at max range, almost max range, and I cast it badly. Honestly I should have done it in this side, and even if I hit him with my W maybe I wouldn't kill him. I don't know how bad, why, why did I cast W this bad, I really don't know, let me see again. What was this? What was this? I would have killed Cassidy in here. I would have definitely killed Cassidy in here with I don't I don't have smart, maybe a tower shot. But that was an a horrendous action ult. So I'm sorry for this. Okay, so do not do that. Try to position as such you will save your team, may not ruin completely everything. Here I actually baited Cassidy in a bit. Uh got some uh Got some CS and then I tried to do the mistake. I actually tried to outplay him now. And this is unfortunate. I've noticed that, well, I'm not that low HP and maybe I can get a kill here. So, okay, I see Kastin. Okay, I see he's coming. Full W, kill him. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. So do not do that, okay? Do not underestimate the power of a dash in close fights when you're not that... Uh, high HP, especially against a high scaling champion. Okay? I mean, what he did was just RQ auto attack. Nothing special. Nothing that wow, but he outplayed me. And these things can actually make you lose the game if you're not careful. I actually gave some gold to him, and he is the most scaling champion in their team, so you have to be careful not to do stupidities like that. And I really want to show you these cases for the brutally honest part. Now, again, another stupid thing will occur shortly. I get golems. I get parts of the golems because I think I will stop doing them, and also be careful when they reset, because we're going to do that. And then I move around here, I move around bot, but you should be careful when doing that if their top laner or mid laner has a teleport. And this looks like a very good time to ult, right? Right? Their Warwick is far ahead, we don't know that, but we do because he just took this, so Herald. We just had the notification that he took Herald. Okay, we see Cassidin. That's important. We see Cassidy going bot, and we don't know yet, but we also see that there is a teleport on their team and on Oros is not. So there is a possibility that Rumble has a teleport. And, well, Twisted Fate has no ult. So I'll let you guess what's going to happen here. What's the logical thing in high elo that is supposed to happen here? Well, Cassidy will come bot with ults, Rumble will teleport right here because we will ult and dash on them. And we're not going to win this by any means. I did not ult, that's my bad. So, I get engaged on, and also Kaiza gets engaged on. And we have a very good, you know, spacing. We got the kill on that, uh, we got the kill on that uh, trash. But it's not enough because they all just fall on top of us and even though Kaiza has her heal it does not matter she should have pat maybe this way but it, thought it did not matter at all we actually failed massively disengage with only one kill for us and three kills for them and next time that our gang bot I will do a mistake again because Cassidy now has teleporting can come and my Twisted Fate will start playing around top to get plates and to actually help Fiora. 
and I'll say okay if uh, they don't have teleports it means that I can gank bot now right wrong because Cassidy still has teleports so there is a macro mistake that I've done two times in a row possibly because I did not consider the teleports and as I said I'm brutally honest with myself look this this is an ultimate that most of you would probably do myself included also it's very hard to hit on Kalista skills and you know that but again look at this yeah here we killed uh, we killed Kalista and then we get clamped on again let's see how could we actually survive this well uh, first of all we need to deal as much damage to help our ADC survive but I have no mana so we lost that then again I step right into a hook and we also die here. so two mistakes in a row I lose a lot of potential farming they also get this here and get some plates we'll do this for half HP now even though we won the top side this was extremely bad for us now if your team is playing top side do not play top side do not play both side as well I mean do not engage in multiple trades at the same time it's obvious you see this in pro play as well and sometimes they fail it too when your team your mid laner does a play top and you see there is just their top laner and no one comes to help it's obvious that they are going to collapse somewhere else which means on bot lane you should be careful so that was the major mistake that i've done again here it's very important and i believe i actually learn a lot myself too from these things now Kalista int it there because our mid laner is very fat uh, but their mid laner is 7 2 and he's a Cassidy now the good thing is that we have a stun for him we have a stun for the Cassidy and this is what actually helps us greatly in winning now here we actually get caught again I mean Sarah does and also I got almost hooked and I position myself as such uh, that I try not to stay too close to the trash hooks or the rumble or the warwick all of them now I see Fiora slowly coming top so when I see her being in range to fight I actually go in I don't care that I get hooked here I really don't uh, because well because I'm here with Fiora and we're actually winning this I tried to go into the healing zone and also rumble has flash here so he will use it uh, now Fiora is still fighting they cannot really do much against her but uh, there will be a war recalled that comes and help us and uh, helps us and actually sorry Xeratold and everything went fine eventually so, but you've seen when I actually engaged I actually waited and only after some time I actually got close when Fiora was in range very important do not go randomly on the map uh, when there is no need to now here I've seen the free farm because Fiora was here, okay, another important thing. Fiora was mid and there was a lot to see a Sunder Tower. She has to recall anyway because she has no mana. My Kaiser is bought just to fade this mid. Someone, somewhere needs to push top lane. Someone needs to move from somewhere to push top lane. That's actually what I wanted to say there. <sighs> and that what that is what happened. Now here I got CS advantage, and even if it doesn't look like I actually I'm ahead and especially since Talia is very strong in the mid game now we can actually do some stuff and oh my god I really did not notice this and yeah this is a free uh, scuttle for us and on drakes we are pretty okay since their drakes since they are getting drakes and the drakes are cloud they are not infernals and we are okay with this now there is an engage and we're actually not doing great as you can see okay because we just gave a huge shutdown uh, to their dominant player and their ADC so I stay here and try to engage I cast the ult I do a W into ult that's beautiful man I really don't do that often but yeah this was mostly my kills and I'm really happy with it I really want you to see it again this rarely happens actually in this elo pushing someone with uh, actually nanny elo I believe pushing someone right into the W 
with your ult predicting exactly where he lands now this isn't really an easy science to follow I, I actually would have missed the kill if I didn't do that W perfectly there but as you can see Fiora is already 7-3 and because of the early trades and because of her really strong Qs on towers as you can see here we're actually starting to slowly win even though we did not really have gold advantage till now that much we have gold advantage only from towers because we have 1, 2, 3, 4 versus 1 tower but in terms of kills and farm they are actually they were actually ahead as you can see there is a 30 CS difference on mid and before getting the kill on top lane they were actually close enough in gold but yeah we got the tower we got a Fiora that scales and this will actually help us win and get us ahead okay getting more farm doing full clears whenever we can and then our ADC fought and got caught but that's a bit irrelevant for the current context what's relevant here is that an aide to Cassidin tried to fight a Fiora and he actually cannot do anything now a fed Cassidin will never be able to kill a fed Fiora if they are at the same gold or you know because Fiora has his her ult he has her everything now Cassidin can do an outplay that's true but one on one it's mostly the Fiora that's going to win especially till late game late late game even then I don't think Cassidy and I have to win son, one versus one with the same gold now that's important same gold it's very important word okay we notice here a fight we notice uh, a trash that we almost caught and killed but really not really uh, but because he returned uh, we almost got him a second time but we backed off because we do not want to risk uh, I 3 Fiora with 500 gold to die so we moved away now the items as you can see here I actually went for some random items it feels like but I actually go for the Banshees since their mid laner and their top laner are AP and usually I don't get focused down by, the, by their ADC that much Fiora will but not really me I will get probably turned down in AoE spells so going for magic resist uh, item kinda is useful here especially against the Warwick that can ult and so on now my team caught my team caught their their uh, top laner said there twice sorry and i actually went towards that cassidy now that cassidy used teleport on bot to kill the fiora here because she overextended and i went for some extra clearing into the jungle now we did something extremely stupid here because i expected that bush that bash to be clear since well no one was here for some time but that's a stupid logic and usually we get caught if you're not careful as you can see here a rumble ult instantly killing us I actually had the vibe that Xerath cleared it but I actually failed because he did not even have the clearing the how do you call it the oracle lens I had it but I used it before so I had a cooldown staying in a bush and waiting to trap people it's a mistake if it's worth it obviously so you have to be careful and they are getting a free barrel here out of that so it's a major mistake that we've done and they are basically turning around the game but there is a teleport coming from Kaiza and also there is an ult coming from Serat so damage from all sides right so what you expect here to happen she has everything she has her E she has any way to escape that she could possibly want but but mistakes does happen do happen so everyone uh, from their team is almost here I mean their Cassidy is not there is also a Twisted Fate ult coming and I'm also coming so soon uh, I will ult here I will actually not ult here sorry I will do a perfect W and everyone else is <laughs> everyone else collapses on top of me but I almost live but because Twisted Fate does not go for the blue card for the yellow card I actually die here so we actually won that the only thing that shouldn't happen here is this Fiora killing their Cassidy 
their Cassidy being the strongest player is supposed to actually be careful when having Baron especially. So, as you can see here, uh, I understand the mistake. He actually tried to fight her and did not escape. Uh, she just, as we used exhaust and uh, killed him for free. Now, I don't really understand what is Warwick doing since. Oh, now this is interesting. This is something that I don't really understand. Why Warwick fought him? I mean, four five Warwick against eleven four. But yeah, this is the moment where the game actually ended because they did not surrender. But Fiora is at that point where she cannot be killed anymore. She's sort of a Cassidy on steroids right now, and she can actually one versus four, one versus three, one versus five maybe if she plays right with her ult proccing it. Uh, but I really, uh, if there are top lane mains that want to try new champions, I really advise on picking her because she's extremely strong at this point uh, in this patch and so on. And yeah, just go for it. Also, the game is almost over here because we have six kills advantage. Now here I tried again to do that uh, spell, that W into ult, that ult into W. But I failed, uh, and because I actually failed, there was a mistake that happened. I will back off you. You tell me what mistake happened here. I'll just, I'll just do this. This is the mistake. Now, because I uh, ulted, I actually cut the path of the twisted fate, so he could do nothing to actually stun. So he had to flash over it. I actually forced Twisted Fate to flash for the stun, so I actually did a major mistake there. Another one, I told you I'm going to be brutally honest with myself. And there it did, soon is going to happen the last uh, moment of the game. She almost got a kill here. Uh, and I will actually target Fiora for you to see how strong and busted she is right now. I mean, not necessarily busted as in OP, but it does require a player with skill. Happening, I clicked her. Okay, now a lot of players will group on her, and she flashed that. Okay, interesting, but she'll be still forced to turn. And another interesting thing is that she actually altered the casting, which has a lot of dashes, but she did proc the ult, so she's actually winning this. And I don't believe that Kai's Kalista ult actually did anything. I'm actually coming there from the side, but as you can see, she's actually 1 versus 4 here, and she's definitely winning. Now, another interesting thing is that even though I had the upper hand against Kalista, I actually failed, but I did a good play of staying back here and not forcing the hand of that Kalista, and now she can outplay me. I definitely know she can outplay me if she plays accordingly, but I knew she had no spells and nothing else. So, the last lesson for this game is, I'm going to show you the full, the full uh, moment. Now she's coming here, and this looks like a free kill, okay? But I did a horrendous kill, and that actually made her survive, and she actually had time to move around my E. This was a really no-brainer for me. I did so many misplays in this game, I don't even know how I won. I actually got carried by that Fiora, but I did try to gank her lane and remove flash for her, so I don't feel that useless. Now, I missed most of my spells because she has such a mobile champion. But you have to predict against her. It's like playing against the Vayne, even though she has much more dashes, basically. But it can be difficult to kill a Kalista. You just have to be careful. Now, here they actually lost the game as you can see and I believe I was brutally honest enough with myself in this game I'm gonna stop here so actually I wanna let you see the nexus pop okay but I'm gonna be brutally honest I did so many misplays this game I have six deaths I have less farm than their jungler which is actually a smurf as far as I remember I think he is yeah with a 60% win or something like that but the good thing, uh, the good things that I've done is that I tried to actually help my bot lane, 
which as you can see they do fine by the end of the game. I actually tried to help my top lane, which were the main targets to gank. On mid lane we had a good setup for W, but because Cassidy is Cassidy and will stay defensive early on, it's sometimes hard to actually kill him. So we did not have many opportunities before 6 and after 6 there was really no point actually in going for it since we could just help other lanes. Now major mistakes, key points, be careful on teleports, I did two mistakes here, first teleport from Rumble, second teleport from Cassidy and they collapsed on us when there was another fight on top happening. Now Twisted Fate gang top helped Fiora, we did the mistake of going here and we lost it because two players were here and us three were here against four of them. Now they got a kill but we lost three people. That's not really good for us. So be careful on the macro de decisions that you do. I did some platinum, gold, silver macro decisions in these games. Maybe, maybe some worse decisions that you with guys do, even if you would be lower division, say bronze. And I did some mistakes that were bronze level, some mistakes that you maybe wouldn't do. And I actually want to admit them so I can learn from them. Also, uh, I tried to help Fiora as much as I could by going top, by not letting Warwick destroy her lane. So that's also good by removing Rumble Flash, by being her, there for her because she has no teleport. And if Warwick ganks her lane and I don't, she actually is sent back multiple times and she doesn't have time to actually win the game. Now. That would have happened if I did not go top during the game. So I focused on the late game scaling, maybe lanes, because I knew mid lane should be fine with the Grandmaster there, as I said. And it was fine. Cassidy is fed, but that's mainly because I did that fail there, another important fail that I've done this game. But in general, I think the game went okay. I did not do major fails like losing a buff, I just randomly died sometimes which happens but you should be careful and you should minimize that and I will too. This is the second game uh, and the last one for today I really hope you enjoyed it and if you like this type of videos uh, please tell me because I really don't know what kind of content to continue to do. I want to sometimes do in some days watching some replays like that. I want to watch replays like that a Talia game and maybe a game on another champion such as Oriana or maybe other, I don't know, maybe Talon, maybe Nocturne Mid, I really like to play that, or things like that. Uh, so, if you like the idea of having two replays per video, one with Talia and one with another champion, I really, uh, I really, actually, I'm curious if you would like that. And if you don't, please tell me, because we really want to be on the same page with the channel, and I don't want to do videos that do not, do not help anyone, so you get the point. I really hope you loved these kind of videos and they help, and I'm gonna keep doing them obviously. So see you next time and have a nice day, night, week, whatever you want guys. And I'm really glad you are always here with me. Goodbye.